Yeah, so this, I, hopefully this is more interactive than me just talking at you because um, we're getting into like the uncomp section of it. Um, but yeah, I, I think we want to have like a conversation about like what do we need, what kind of measurements do we need to like improve on or add to the IPFS network or like what are we missing or are there questions about how we can implement certain kind of measurements. Um, so I wanted to seed it a little bit with like, why are we measuring stuff in general? Because there's a lot of different reasons that we measure things. Um, so yeah, I'm Gus. Uh, my GitHub handle is Gus Eckert. Um, I am on the Protocol Labs IPFS steward. So I work on Kubo and the, the IPFS protocols. Um, my background is like, I came to PL from AWS where I worked on Web2 services. And before that I did AB testing. So it was like a lot of thinking about metrics and how to how to make sense of them. Um, and the mobile experimentation in particular is interesting because it's a lot like the problems are very similar to the problems we have in peer to peer networks where like nodes come and go randomly um, and those kind of problems. Um, so yeah, so why are we measuring stuff? Uh, like one of the one of the big reasons we measure things is because we want to know that things work and when they stop working, right? Um, so we can catch bugs. Um, also, like the I found that like the process of defining what working means is actually it can be pretty difficult. Um, and being able to like once you figure out what working means, being able to observe it can be even more difficult, especially in these peer to peer systems. Um, like for example, in the Hydra boosters, uh, one of the big problems with them is we don't know how to tell objectively like if they're doing their job, which like is like to help out the network basically, the DHT network. Um, and then like reality turns out to be pretty surprising sometimes. Like a lot of times we think that reality is one way, but then when we look at it, it turns out to be pretty different from what we expected. Um, so like having a little bit of humbleness about about uh, what we're working on, or the data can actually, you know, imbue humility in us. Um, we're really bad at predicting the future. Like Einstein didn't think that nuclear energy was feasible. Um, and also like, like external events happen that nobody can predict like COVID um, that dramatically change people's behavior. Um, and if we have the data there to already understand what's happening, we can adapt pretty quickly to it. Um, and there's also, particularly in IPFS, there's a lot of constants, like in, for example, K buckets. I think Dennis was talking about this yesterday. Um, and uh, yeah, like assumptions that led to those, or maybe there were no assumptions. I don't know, but um, they can change over time. And so, if we're if we're watching the data that led to those assumptions, we'll know over time uh, when we need to adjust constants. Um, as a developer, this one rings true to me. Uh, you're always like ramping up people. People come and go uh, working on these problems. And if you have the data for them to look at, they can ramp up a lot more quickly um, rather than having all the domain knowledge in your head. Um, emergent behavior, especially in these peer to peer systems can be hard to predict. Uh, so we have like these simple algorithms, but then when they get together in swarms of nodes and stuff, they can behave in unpredictable ways. Um, like trying to figure out what kind of metric we would use to detect this feedback loop here would actually be pretty interesting. Uh, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, uh, yeah, and then also to keep us honest on what we're working on uh, so that we don't end up working on problems that nobody cares about, but that we think are particularly interesting. Um, yeah, and so I also, I also feel strongly that sometimes metrics are not enough because they, they um, discard information by design. And sometimes the information they're discarding you care about. Uh, and so like you also need to verify that you're your metrics are the right metrics by looking at the information you're discarding. And there's a lot of ways to do that, right? Like we can look at individual cases and logs and randomly sampling and looking at probability distributions. And, um, like uh, for example, this guy on Twitter was complaining about a bimodal distribution he was seeing when he was pinging uh, 
probably Google or something. Um, uh, can anyone figure out why there would be a bimodal distribution here? Or does anyone have a hypothesis about why your pings would be bimodal like this? Um, so it turned out at noon on Wednesday, his, his latency went down just a little bit. Um, and, it, and so like by looking at this, this graph here, you get, by if you were just looking at a number, like you would never see this information. And this is a lot of information, right? Something happened at exactly noon, and then at exactly noon the next day, it looks like the variance might have increased or something. Um, and so just by like, like breaking out of just the metrics bubble uh, and looking at graphs and distributions and stuff like that, we can get all kinds of interesting information about how the network's behaving. Um, so yeah, what do we already measure? We already measure quite a bit, um, and it's and a lot of different people measure it too. I think Dennis has already shown the Nebula crawler, um, but if you go to stats.ipfs.network, there's reports that are generated generally every day that have. Let's see if this loads. There we go. Version information about Kubo nodes. Some of them may not be Kubo nodes. Um, you know, we get uh, interesting, interesting behavioral patterns like one-off nodes that appear and then disappear immediately. Um, churn, which is these are probably some of the most interesting graphs in this in this report. And then there's a lot of like geographic distribution. Where is it? Yeah, where you can see like what countries nodes are are coming from. Um, so that's, that's one source of metrics that we have. Protocol Labs has a bunch of internal dashboards, and I'm sorry that they're all internal, but that's just the way they are right now. Um, for example, our, we, we run the IPFS.io gateways as well, and so we get a bunch of great metrics from that. Uh, if it loads, like for example, want list sizes from BitSwap, um, all these time to first byte metrics from Nginx, and the list goes on and on and on, latencies and errors and timeouts. Um, and because IPFS.io is so popular, uh, it can be a pretty good window into the network. Um, we also collect a lot of logs and have Elasticsearch dashboards. I couldn't get this one to quite load, but you can see, like for example, we can break down, what was that? Uh, it does. I don't know why some of these are erroring out. Maybe the interval is too high or something. But um, mm -hmm. someone needs to fix these. Uh, but I mean, just this graph alone is pretty interesting. Like you get the devices that um, that are requesting data from the gateways. Uh, there's a, a nice content routing dashboard that we have. So we have a system that periodically uh, puts records into the network and then measures how long it takes to get them back out. Um, and so these are like the KPIs that we track for the DHT, for example. Uh, like this one is, is, is pretty important. Um, uh, it might take a while to load. But yeah, we have this system that, that does DHT queries and puts and stuff and measures things. Um, Again, we get an overall view of how the DHT is performing. Um, the Hydras that we run, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, the Hydras are DHT nodes that are scaled up to basically, so that any DHT query has a very high probability of hitting a Hydra node. Um, and so they have a really good view of the network from a DHT perspective. Um, so you can see they process like a ton of requests. So this is somewhat like, like we can get a good idea of how much traffic is flowing around in the network just from this graph alone. Um, if we look at the database, we can see like, actually this is interesting. In the last day, there was like a huge surge by, there was like a billion new records that were put into the DHT. Um, so we can get like a good global view of the number of records floating around in the DHT. Um, and then the number of records that expire and get evicted. Um, 
uh, the maintainer for Rust libp2p has a, a small dashboard that has some DHT metrics in it as well. Um, like unique nodes and their, their times and their countries as well. Um, and then this is a pretty good website as well by this group called Trudy. Oh wait, not this one this one. And I'll send these slides out after afterwards so that y'all can get these links. Um, unfortunately, these links under the PL dashboards are probably not going to work for most people. Um, yeah, there's a nice graph of the number of nodes on the network over time, and then the agent distributions, user agents coming and going. Um, yeah. And then some examples of stuff we might want, right? There's a, there's a really awesome GitHub repo, um, f that has requests for measurements in it. So if y'all have ideas or needs for measurements that you want, that you want to get prioritized, um, you can submit an RFM here and describe like what the measurement is and how you would measure it. And then there, I, th I believe there's grants, um, Right, there's uh, bounties on these for people to implement as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool cool ideas in here, like measuring DHT. Some of these were in talks today, actually, like DHT routing health and um, bit swap. Um, but yeah. Uh, some some things that I have like 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 was just mentioned in the last talk right like BitSwap is sorely missing lots of metrics like the number of cancels and how successful is the discovery process when BitSwap broadcasts peers out right um, latency how like how useful is it that BitSwap how useful are the BitSwap sessions I think is an interesting question to ask because uh, we don't have any data on those at all I don't think. Um, leeches in the network. I think we were just talking earlier about the idea of collecting data from network nodes. Like maybe each network node could have a, a, a little server that responds with some metrics and then we could just crawl the network and get metrics from every node about what their experience looks like on the network. Um, so yeah, these are just some like examples. So I wanna like see from other people what they think uh, we should build and hopefully like the out, out the, hopefully the result will be, uh, you know, a better understanding of what we want and maybe some new RFMs or, um, yeah. Anyone have any ideas or <laughs> anything they feel strongly about? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think if other people don't know, I think hydras have an interesting behavior that not a lot of people realize, I think, and that if they get a request for uh, a record that they don't have, they'll return to the caller that they don't have it, but they'll also start a background process to go find it. Um, and so that can create some extra work on the DHT. Um, but it, the net re like it's, they're basically trying to make the DHT healthier by by caching more stuff. Um, but if there's a lot of like unfindable records, right, uh, then it could just be creating a lot of unnecessary work. Uh, I'd like to hear from people about um, you know the nodes themselves emitting more stats. Um, and us being able to query the network, you know, live, and like what people think about that as far as one security to like performance impacts, 
Um, if they, I mean, even if it sounds like a decent idea from the get go, but I would love that. Like with a focus on metric, getting metrics specifically, I think that's the ideal scenario. Like without any other considerations. Does anybody disagree with that? Um, there is an issue when you're a provider like that because to, for that to work, you need those stats to be available from outside. Mm -hmm. Where typically, like, remote ones are not accessible that way. Or at least you try not to because that means some of the access to the point of structure is bad. Um, so if you do want to do that for service provider, that might require some kind of access control, maybe, or something. Or yeah, like some some sort of trusting of the other IPFS nodes. Yeah. Right. But but that might be not the, the, the right target because as service provider we do have metrics, different kinds <coughs> of metrics and metrics that not much people have. Maybe just focusing on publicly accessible nodes might be just enough. Or just making each node publicly accessible, making like like not just like random people that run <coughs> nodes that are on the network normally might be enough to get useful uh, information about the network in general. With without those big content providers that are outside. Uh, kind of, I think I'm missing something, but um, I think it's I guess it depends on to what do you want to measure. Do you want to measure the, the network in general or like every type of nodes? I mean, how do you measure the network in general without knowing what the pieces of your network are doing? Like that's that to me seems like false premise from the get go, right? Like you need data on the pieces to get a sum. Like you can't yeah. find the final solution to an equation without understanding what each variable is, right? Yeah, just just yeah, just like the nodes that service provider have are usually protected in some way, or it might not looks like a normal node in any shape or form either. Sure. So so. so I think your call out is that some nodes won't be able to provide that data, like if they're if they're a service provider or other node. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So then how I mean what percentage of nodes is that on the network? Like do we even know? I think that's one metric that we think that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. What so percentage of what percentage of nodes on the network are service providers? You know, what percentage are are nodes that aren't individual users? Which percentage of nodes are trying to make profit inside of the network, you know, for whatever reason. Um, yeah. Which ones are commercial, which ones are... A different question there would be less about the number of nodes, but more the amount of content. I think both is relevant. But the number of nodes is, like, could be an interesting metric, but it's not necessarily what you want, because if you're an individual, you're most, more likely to have, like, one node with a unique identity, while I mean, as a provider, I could decide either to have like one identity with like, know, like a lot more beefing behind it, or like have multiple identities distributed. So, yeah. But, but, but there's been some work on that as well. There are some papers on trying to identify who is who. Yeah, the, the one caveat with everything that I've said so far, I will say for the rest of this conversation, is that I have not looked through that um, request for metrics repo at all. I just found out about it. So. <laughs> So please let me know if I'm way off base. <laughs> no, no, definitely. Um, I think tracing within the nodes has been something we thought about. Uh, there are a few things there. One is what would be useful. The second is what percentage of that would make sense to um, uh, share with other nodes uh, without, you know, you don't want to overload the network and right. nodes with too much traffic. So, what's the size of metrics we can share without metric uh, network degradation? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also, what is 
not kind of um, touching on any you know, privacy issue, buying notes by you know sharing your stuff with others. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely activity on the network, but I guess I don't know maybe the uptime and bandwidth consumption. Peers, can, number of peers that you're connected to, like is that yeah is that a security question? Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't necessarily think it is, but I guess you could argue that it is in some way. I think in order to do this exercise, it would be perhaps good starting from the opposite side to say, what do we want to use these metrics for? Right? Yeah. So do we want to use it to have better DHC routine table uh, entries? Yeah. Uh, or do we want it in order to choose peers that are more closely geographically closer to us yeah. to connect or request content from is it like what is it and then we see if that as a as a kubo developer i'm really interested in like what people's experiences using software that i work on and like i don't have a good understanding of that because we don't really collect that kind of so like i would be interested in knowing like, like gathering information from all the nodes about like have they been having a good experience right mm -hmm. and if not like why User experience or like the nose behavior? Yeah, both. Okay. But most like ultimately the like, user experience, right? Like which which is ultimately what we all care about. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so like what is what does that actually mean as far as metrics go? User experience of a Kubo node is that like do I have a bad experience if all of my wants are unresolved or like what what criteria? Yeah, That's like okay. time out gateway requests, for example. Maybe yeah, maybe someone, um, I think or like the collect data. Yeah, what does user experience mean? Right. We should define that for sure. Yeah. But for feature development, the honest to answer your question, I think is for for me as you know, I I'd be Stewart's team member yeah. know, working on desktop and what do I? Um, yeah, like what? How, how do I know that? For example, one question. You know, we have, I just looked at this yesterday, about a thousand um, active users, you know, unique users per day from IPFS desktop. Right. Okay. So how do I know if those users are benefiting the network at all? Like are, like some metrics I can get myself, like are they actually keeping desktop open for a certain period of time? We have some of those metrics, I just haven't dove into it. But like at the network level, are IPFS desktop users actually benefiting things or hurting things? Um, you know, like... Okay, how, how would they benefit things? By being another node on the network to provide content, potentially caching content uh, that they are looking up. Maybe they're long time, maybe we have one to five desktop users that are, mm -hmm. that have a ton of content that's very popular. Mm -hmm. um, Yes. I, I guess there are a million ways. I don't know all, you know, no. a ton. But then, like bit swap, bit swap stats that we talked about. I think that that that's like why would we want bit swap stats? And that's to help inform the efficacy of the network, right? Like a bit swap as a protocol is not efficient or there's a lot of things that are failing that we don't tr understand deeply, then we can say that our network is performing, underperforming, mm -hmm. right? So I think, is our network underperforming is one goal for BitSwap network metrics. We so, know that it is on our gateway, right? BitSwap metrics? Well, we know that BitSwap has trouble on our gateways. Like, is that, is that the case for a regular no, I don't know. I, why why wouldn't it be different? I guess is my question. Well, the gateways have a process way more traffic than uh, an end user node. But, right. So then, is like what metrics do we need to determine whether in a large amount of traffic is the cause of the bit swap problems yeah. versus every single potential request has the potential for? Yeah. yeah. Does everyone suffer from this, or is it just gateways? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and oh, I had a question about whether 
a particular thing. What would fit as a request for metrics, I guess? Like, is this discussion a relevant yeah, yeah, item absolutely. in request for metrics? Yeah, yeah, it is absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So in this repository, anyone can go and um, start uh, a PR or start an issue and discuss ideas that they have that they think are going to be useful. Awesome. And um, yeah, if you go to each RFM, basically there is a short description. And in most cases, not all of the cases, but in most cases, there is a, um, a short description of the methodology as well. Like, how would you go about doing it? Uh, or, you know, suggestion or thoughts and stuff like that. And once um, that becomes kind of priority, then we need to work harder to come up with a methodology if we don't already have it. And uh, actually, yeah, do it, yeah. So, of course, you're more than welcome to, to start any number of these. Excellent. Yeah. Super cool, thanks. Yeah, and it would be good to have a list of all these things that you just mentioned, um, were mentioned here, to have them documented somewhere. Um, do we, do we get this recording even if it doesn't post to YouTube? Yeah, does anybody have a yeah. higher recording? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't mind. I, I don't know what we're going to be the end of the month. I'm sure we can get it. Did you have something, Antonio? Yeah, we are talking always about like metrics, uh, about the, net, the, the, the network it, itself. Yeah. But I would love to have some benchmark with times, <coughs> assumption, CPU, right? To be able to, to detect problems between versions before launching the new mm -hmm. like a Kubo, Kubo version to the network, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> it will like, you know, like <laughs> uh, mm, information beforehand. I would love to like to have some metrics about this. Also. Like what, could you elaborate on that? So the source profile. Like having, having, uh, having, I had it in the first project. I have like a SQL engine with a really strange database. So we we have like a specific use cases like queries, like um, using some part of the database that we knew that we had some problems before. So we executed that queries on all the on all the versions of the database. So. We can easily see some spike, some memory spike if we did something really wrong or some CPU times that were like totally different from the previous version. Or we can clearly see if some improvement that we implemented they actually improved something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so have some kind of like benchmarks and simulations. Benchmark and like use cases, specific use cases like okay, let's uh, test the DST. What happen if we have like Five nodes, and we start like moving around uh, records of X size. We don't like, actually have a lot of that kind of stuff. That's kind of interesting. We don't have, have a lot of benchmarks that we have. No, that's a that's a good one, I think. And where is the place to build it? Like test ground or yeah, yeah, maybe test ground and create some graphs or something that we can like compare between commits or builds. Or have ideas and and test them out and record some metrics on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like this right now. Like, um, I think that's what it does. Is, is there nothing? Like, I think there is some of that for the gateways, no? There is some the gateways profiling have, on CPU. Maybe. They have some testing environments that receive, they, they get like mirrored traffic from production, basically. Mm -hmm. So, like, the production servers will just forward copies of all their requests off to some host that you can just do random stuff to, but it'll actually, responses don't go back to anyone. Um, but that's only for gateway stuff, right? Like, yeah, just on the gateway. Yeah. Oh, on the gateway, we was able to monitor the, the go, like the go like metric on like memory allocation, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Doing like, I mean, it's not like proper testing. Uh, it's more like you don't have like testing against like scenario regime. You know? um, but you could already like test it with like, part of like live traffic to see how. how we, we, yeah, we really do that before we release a Kuba version, Bef like before it's released for like a week. Beforehand, we'll put it on a gateway node and watch the metrics and make sure it's okay. Okay, so this is done somehow. Very primitively. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like that's not a good that's not a good way to experiment with with 
tweaks to network protocols and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you want like a little microcosm of an IPFS network and observe how the nodes behave, right? Yeah. Um, so we could, we could try to create the realistic simulation maybe in test ground and then to be able to deploy any version on top of it. But then how do we have like hardware measurement on VM or in test ground? So that, I mean, that's the selling, that's yeah. the like, that's the reason test ground exists. So if it can't do that, <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, having a realistic simulation, I, I think it's tough. Because you can, it has knobs where you can tweak like latency and packet yeah. loss and all these things to like simulate certain network scenarios. Um, yeah, but take real world observation and create a model. Yeah, that's one of the tricks. And scale. Yeah. It's a, it's Your a good model challenge. Your model represents reality. Yeah, yeah it's very <laughs> good. So I was checking the RFMs to see if this existed already, but if you go scroll to RFM 16, One of the bit swap efficacy, basically. Yeah. Right. What I was wondering is, instead of generating a bunch of CIDs and sending them out, is looking at the want lists that are out there in the wild, and then seeing how long those CIDs stay on the want list. In the you know kind of like sort of polling peers, it's a little rude, I suppose, but it would be really interesting to see in practice how long something stays on a certain peer's want list or a sample of those or something. Like yeah, yeah. And these type of individual yeah. node yeah. metrics are the things we can't get from simulated networks. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. But how? Um, yeah. So we need to find wrong lists instead of CIDs to query, right? Yeah, I remember. I mean, I experimented with this way back in the day, probably like 2019 or something like that. And you used to be able to query a, another peer's want list, but I don't know if you can still do that. Um, and then query again after a second or something. Yeah, pull. yeah, just pull it for a little while and see if, you know, if it shrinks, if it goes up or down or whatever. And then you, you, that might be uh, an indicator of user experience too, because that's somebody looking for content and waiting for content. Yeah. I mean, we could roll that up into statistics we collect from nodes, right? Average want list time or something like that. That'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so you can ask it another peer what its want list look, looks like, right? I, I that's what you're saying, right? I know that you used to be able to do that. I haven't checked in a while. All right. It's um, probably it's my own, like, <laughs> <laughs> my own problem, you know. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that was possible. Of course, yeah. I've never done. No, but yeah, we need to <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I think the important thing here is that we have this discussion publicly in these kind of repositories. Yeah. It's like yeah. now that we all in this room know that this GitHub repository exists, like, uh, I mean, you need to measure what people want to be measured. Like, we, we can have just close, a close idea of what needs to be measured, but it's also interesting to know, like, what other people think that needs to be measured. So like, we should put that all those things here and make issues or good requests to the yeah. existing RFMs. Like open also the discussion to people that would be interested also in point out other things that we are missing. Like this. Do you want me to make a tour for that? No. It's just a way of actually like uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. To open an issue as an idea for RFM sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, we address it all yeah. The cool. PR could change that measurement plan there. But the same way, like if, if there is any other everything that would potentially be also cool to have, like just feel free, like. I opened the issue number 66 and I'm just gonna try to jot some notes down there, but it is open, description is there and, and just informative of what I'm saying right now. But nice. add a comment as, as we're taking notes if something really hits you. Because I won't be able to keep up with it all. Yeah. You open the issue right now? Yeah. Number 66. Okay. Protocol slash metrics issue 66. The protocol sl slash network measurements. It's in slash metrics, but wait. That's where the <laughs> RFMs are, isn't it? No, no, no network <laughs> measurements. Well, I'll <laughs> move it. <laughs> or someone else move it because I don't have permissions. <laughs>
I'm trying to get the errors out of the way so everyone else can just jot their yeah. good ideas down. <laughs> <laughs> Very slow. Thank <laughs> you.